Hi, everybody. I'm Dave from the Polypad team, and I am here to share with you our Polypad updates for July and August 2023. In May of 2023, we released a new authoring mode on Polypad, and many of the updates that I'm going to share with you today are part of this new authoring mode. So here is an image of an adorable beagle that I added to the canvas. There's an upload image that you can use, or you can just drag a canvas or an image right onto the canvas. This is a PNG image with the background removed. So the feature I'm about to show you only works with PNG images with backgrounds removed. So I'm gonna go into the file tab on the left and there's a toggle here to turn on our authoring mode, there's a link here to learn all about authoring mode. I'm going to turn it on, and you can see I got all these toggles and checkboxes to fully customize Polypad. Again, you can watch the May 2023 video to learn more, or click on this button right here to learn more. But now, when I click on this image, I have a whole set of additional options in the advanced menu. So I'm going to click on this, and I'm going to change the mask of this image. I could do an ellipse mask where now I have it like an ellipse that I can change. But I want to show you what happens when I do the alpha mask. So the alpha mask puts an outline around the entire imported image. So now if I click right here, I don't select the image. Or if I click right here, but if I click on the tail, I select the image or anywhere else on the beagle. So that's great if I turn off um, the toggle into authoring mode. You can see here now a student could resize the image. They could rotate the image if they wanted to. So if I want to turn those off, I'll go back into authoring mode. And on images, there's the ability to turn off the toggle of the handle. I still see it because I'm in authoring mode. And as an author, I might want to change the size of the image. When I leave authoring mode, you can see that's gone. There is this, this handle still at the top where I can rotate it. A new feature in authoring mode is for every tile, you can turn off the ability to rotate that tile inside of authoring mode. So here I will turn this off so it can't be rotated. And now I just have this beagle that students can move around the screen. Wonderful. Uh, some other new features in authoring mode. One to show is with our number lines. So here is a number line all sorts of great options available to customize the number line. But if I go back into authoring mode, uh, one feature we've added is the ability to add a label before or after the numbers on the number line. So if I wanted to do a dollar sign, I could have a dollar sign appear on all of those labels on the number line, or I could change it maybe to a cent sign or something. So there's a C, but really it could be any label that you want. Great, so that's available on number lines. Uh, an another feature I'm really excited about in, in authoring mode is the ability to add a label onto any of the polygons. So again, I'm still in authoring mode. I'm gonna go to the advanced menu on this hexagon and I can type in a label that will appear on this shape. So now I can see this is, is a hexagon. I could give it a capital H if I wanted to. I can change the font size even to make it bigger or smaller. And a number of features in here as well. I could choose whether I want the label to rotate with the shape or not. So when I go outside of authoring mode, you can see here it's off. So that just that label stays like that as a hexagon. And students can move it around and, and keep that labeled as a hexagon. Or you could have the label um, have it rotate with the shape. So I'll turn this toggle on and go out of authoring mode. And you can see that now as I rotate it, the label rotates with the shape as well. So lots of really great features for labels on polygons and some even more advanced um, label options with our custom rectangle. So I'm gonna go in here, turn on authoring mode, and let me just add a label like, hello, and make this font a little bit bigger. Uh, and so one option in, in the custom rectangle is to set a, a corner radius. So if I want the corners of this to be a little more rounded, I can use this toggle here to set a corner radius. Maybe I'll do one of like two here. And then I can use this handle to change the size of that 
So I could have any sort of a, like label on this um, on this text box almost that like students can like can move around the screen. Uh, I could decide whether I want students to see this handle to change the size of it or not. So maybe I just want it to be like this and turn off the handle and not have students have the ability to rotate this, turn all those off, head out of authoring mode, and there I just have that uh, box that says hello. Super fun. So a lot of options there. Uh, a few other quick things to share. In, in the May video, we talked about uh, under authoring tools, there is a drop zone tile. And so you can go watch that video or um, click the learn more under authoring tools to learn about the drop zone. But one feature I just want to point out, if you are using this drop zone inside of Activity Builder in Desmos Classroom, which I'll put a link in the video comments about how to learn more about using Polypad inside of Activity Builder. There is a way to have data of tiles inside the drop zone inside of Activity Builder. The data of those tiles can be exported out to computational layer. So if that's something you're interested in learning more about, go check out the link in the comments. And then one small update to share that is not in authoring mode is with our number grid. So I'm going to go to the number section and pull out a number grid. Let me zoom out a little bit here uh, and just move it down the canvas. And so there's always been the ability to switch directions. So the one could be at the top or the bottom, but we've now added the ability to change the start value. So we've heard from teachers that would be really helpful if this could start at zero instead of one. So I can make that a zero and I could switch direction. So the zero is down here, but you could really um, enter in any starting value that you want. There's 37 and then you can use these handles to change the size of the number grid as you like. And I think uh, the starting values can be negative as well. So I could go negative 37 and the smallest number you can do is negative 499 and the largest is 499 might even be 500. Let me just check this on the spot. Yeah, 500 is the largest starting value that you can have. And there are also those abilities on our addition and multiplication grids. So here you can go in here and change the starting value for both the x and the y axis of the addition and multiplication grids. And if you have this set and you don't want students to have the ability to change those start values, you could turn those off for students in authoring mode. And again, you can click this button here to learn more about how to use all those tools. So those are the July and August 2023 Polypad updates. Hope uh, this provided some good information about those. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you get all the latest videos about our future updates. Thanks very much.